were over the ridge. All hands were tense as the word spread through the little research vessel, Atlantis, for it meant we had reached our goal. A mile or so beneath our keel stretched the gloom-shrouded peaks, valleys, and ridges of the longest mountain system on Earth, the mysterious Mid-Atlantic Ridge, which we had come to explore. And of course, they want to make sure that everyone understands. They say, though our ship was named Atlantis, we had no illusions of solving that age-old mystery. So a rather wild idea had led us to devote four hours to this particular rock dredging. Now what they were doing was they were actually pulling dredges along the ocean floor to scoop up rocks and materials off the flanks of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, okay? So our hypothesis was that the long level terraces with sediments ranging up to 3,000 feet in depth were submerged shorelines. Okay, so they had noticed along the Mid-Atlantic Ridge that there were level terraces. Okay, you got to picture that, right? So they've now th they thought, could these possibly be shorelines? So this is what they're going to try to try to get to the bottom of by dredging off materials off of these terraces. If so, if they were in fact shorelines, the steep cliffs rising from them should have boulders at their bases as do wave cut cliffs on our shorelines today. And he says, it is of course, extremely radical speculation to identify these level stretches more than two miles below the sea surface as former beaches. Such a theory would require the obvious but almost incredible conclusion that the land here has subsided two miles or else the sea has risen by that amount. Much work will have to be done before this startling theory can be proved or disproved. In any case, we were encouraged to find that at the bases of the cliffs above such terraces, rocks and boulders could be readily, readily obtained. Wow. He says, then about halfway between New York and Bermuda, we bought, brought up one of our most remarkable cores. It included sand like that found on beaches. How did beach sand get here, 300 miles away from any shallow water? I decided that it must have come from a mountain now beneath the surface of the sea and predicted that such a seamount would be found nearby. Months later in April, a mountain as forecast was discovered by the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute. At least a mile high, the mountain lies at approximately 36 degrees 42 minutes north and 67 degrees 57 minutes west. If the peak is the source of the sand, it must once have stood at or above the level of the sea, since sand is formed by weathering and wave action. This indication that the sea bottom has subsided or the sea itself has risen coincides with some scientists interpretation of the submarine canyons off many coasts. The same core told us further story, a further story of changes in the, in the ages past. The sand contains the remains of bottom dwelling creatures living today in present oceans but confined to much shallower and colder water. The upper part of the core consists of a brownish silty mud containing quantities of the tiny shells of the warm water loving creatures which flourish today in the Gulf Stream. And similar warm water forms appear in the layers of the silty mud below the sand. With this evidence, reports David Erickson, who had charge of the analysis of bottom samples, we can be quite sure that the sand layer was deposited during the most recent ice age, when tremendous masses of ice largely covered Canada and the northern parts of the United States, Europe, and Asia. Right, so let's pause there for a moment. If this mountain was above sea level during 
the Ice Age. I mean, this we're talking about could be we're talking about 20,000 years ago or less, right? So and again, that research is being done in 1948. Yeah, 1948, exactly. I always had a question too about that. Like, like shouldn't there be, if the sea levels rose that much, you know, most coral doesn't grow. I mean, it won't form if the, if the water is much deeper than, you know, 100 feet or something like that, right? Well, Does that is, that is what led John Shaw, the great, the late great John Shaw, to devise his model of the CREs, catastrophic rise events. And he got that model from studying coral systems, reef systems around the planet that had drowned because of such rapid sea level rise. So CREs, catastrophic rise events. Right. And so, so that also yeah. means that all the coral formations we have, even you know, the great reef off of Australia, all that stuff is, is only 10,000 years old or so. Presumably, right? presumably. Yeah. yeah if presumably. somebody has more information on that, uh, but yeah, that would certainly be something that would be worth looking into. Yeah. I mean, uh, to folks listening to this stuff, I hope it is becoming more and more clear that there's an enormous amount of work that needs to be done to resolve these, these issues, these mysteries. Um, a lot of scientific work that, that has to be done. There's no. many unanswered questions. I mean, it's it's regrettable that there's a lot of people walking around out there right now under the illusion that it's all figured out. And that there are some authorities in some ensconced in some uh, in their ivory towers or wherever it is um, that have it all figured out. And so if they make this pronouncement that, you know, we know that whatever carbon dioxide is now the sole driver of climate, you know, it's like the authorities have spoken. And we're going to try to dispel that illusion on the part of a lot of people and, and Try to wake people up to the idea that, yeah, there are a lot of unanswered questions yet. So now let's go forward one year to 1949, and uh, National Geographic has another article, a follow-up by Maurice Ewing, because uh, based on a subsequent expedition. So this was entitled New Discoveries on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, came out in uh, National Geographic 1949. The article begins, stand by to lower away. As this cry sounded, all hands crowded to the rail of our little research ship Atlantis, rolling easily as she lay hove to on the gray mid-ocean swells. It was a tense but eagerly awaited moment on our second voyage of exploration of the mid-Atlantic ridge, the world's longest mountain range, which runs a full mile deep under almost the whole length of the Atlantic Ocean. Some of the things we found on this second cruise create new scientific puzzles. One was the discovery of prehistoric beach sand in two core samples of the bottom, brought up in one case from a depth of two, and in the other nearly three and one-half miles, far from any place where beaches exist today. So this is the second uh, mission out of, of, the, of the research vessel Atlantis, and they go down and they're finding three and a half miles down, they're finding beach sand. Yeah, that's Presumably crazy. the remnant of a beach. Sometime in the distant past, this sand found deep beneath the ocean must have been located on a beach at or near the surface of the sea. Either the land must have sunk two to three miles, or the sea once must have been two to three miles lower than now. Either conclusion is startling. Yeah, mm -hmm. right, a combination of the two is what I'm thinking, right? That's probably what, like the land was, uh, the land was higher and the sea was lower. Yes, the, the land was higher. Well, yes, the sea the sea bottom is now lower than it would have been during the ice yes. age. I think that's okay, right. the conclusion we can draw from this. The sea level is higher. The sea bottom is lower. And in right. some cases, maybe lower by a very significant amount. If that's the case, you're talking about a, an Atlantic Ocean that was essentially much, much shallower. The Atlantic yeah. Ridge itself would have been a mountain range above water. 
they're essentially splitting Atlantic into two. It's a weird thought to contemplate. I'm not sure. It's pretty weird. <laughs> well, let's go on. There's more. I mean, we're just we're just barely getting into this. You see, between 1947 and 1948, at about the same time, there was another. Uh, there was a, a Swedish deep sea exploration going on, and was led by a, a scientist named Hans Peterson. And in 1954. Uh, he published a work called The Ocean Floor, published by Yale University Press. And he talks about the discoveries of this uh, Swedish deep sea expedition. So he goes here, he says, a very different type of deep sea sand is found about 1,500 nautical miles further west, slightly north of the equator, here from a depth of about 4,400 meters, which is... Uh, about, ooh, that's 14,000 feet below sea level. So that works out to be over two and a half miles, okay? Here from a depth of about 4,400 meters, the core sampler brought up nearly nine, a core nearly nine meters long, the uppermost parts of which consisted of a fairly homogeneous, fine-grained, deep-sea clay, like exactly what you would expect, right? That, you know, because under normal circumstances, you've got this continually rain, raining deposition of sediment onto the ocean floor, right? And it builds up these layers of clay, which are mostly the shells of the forams and the little, the, the, the little benthic and neurotic creatures that are in the ocean, the planktonic creatures and so on that are in the ocean, they die. And you, so you gradually create these layers that, that, that are like clay, right? So the uppermost parts consisted of a fairly homogeneous, meaning uniform throughout, right, which is the kind of deposition you have under normal gradualistic uniform environments, right? Okay, yeah. A fine grain, again, fine, you know, the implication that it's, you know, there's not huge energies involved or great turbulence or anything like that. In the lower part, several layers of sand were found which mineralogical examination showed to be not mafic, but of continental origin. In other words, mafic is just a type of, uh, refers to the type of basaltic oceanic crust that you would find typically in the deep ocean basin. And so what he's saying here is that when they examined the, the mineralogical content of, of this sand, it was not of origin from ocean basin rock, but from continental rock. That is, derived from a coastal shelf of some, get this, continent or large island. Ah, uh, yeah. Most surprising of all, in the lowest stratum of this sand were found vegetable remains. Twigs, nuts, and bark fragments cotyledonous bushes or trees, bespeaking still more emphatically a continental or island origin. Finally, in the uppermost parts of the same core were found a, in quotes, displaced fauna consisting of benthonic shallow water foram shells, which had apparently lived in depths of 100 to 200 meters. Now, this is at 14,400 feet right. down, right? Yeah, so here they are. Yeah. These are bona fide scientists who are, who, are, who are essentially laying the groundwork for what is now modern ocean, oceanography and marine geology. And look at what these guys are saying. Look at what they're, they're, they're pulling up and, and, and examining and discovering. He goes on to say, one is at a loss to explain how these products of a coastal shelf and supramarine vegetation could have been carried to the position of this find. In the event that a large island harboring vegetation and with a fairly extensive shelf crowned the mid-Atlantic ridge and became submerged during a catastrophe of seismic volcanic character a few hundred thousand years ago, Material like that found in the cores might have become distributed over the adjacent sea bottom. So in other words, now he's placing the catastrophe with no dating whatsoever, just speculation and assumption of, you know, a few hundred thousand years ago. 
But the point he's making is that in order to explain the presence of the beach sand and the vegetation, what he's invoking is the idea that you had a a fairly extensive shelf, as he calls it, that was submerged during a catastrophe. That's right. the point right there. And that, that's the takeaway of this. Let's pause for a moment to digest what we've just learned. Is there anything we've learned here that would instantly rule out the possibility of a sunken landmass along the Mid-Atlantic Ridge? Uh, Absolutely not. not. I, no. Absolutely not. Do we have a theoretical basis that could explain large-scale vertical movements of the Earth's crust? Yes, we do. We do. We do. With, this, with this understanding we have now, are we prepared to say there's absolutely no possibility that a culture couldn't have evolved on a landmass in the mid-Atlantic Ocean during the Ice Age? No I reason would, to say that. No reason to say that. No, no, not at all. 